It's that time. If you're thinking about watching a movie this weekend, listen up. Our friend Christopher Lloyd, the Film app, is with us, always letting us know which movies are worth it to yes. watch. Thank you for being here. Hi, Chris. Always fantastic to be here. So much joy and fun with you guys. We have a good time, especially when Lee is the segment before. And I he's loved just Lee hopped reading, up on donuts. Yeah, hopped up on donuts, reading the teas ahead to your segment. He did a pretty good job. Yeah. yeah. I think he did great. It's not easy to read the prompter, you know? It's not easy. Yeah. I think your guys' jobs are safe, though. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Well, thank you. That's nice. But, All right, yeah, let's dive into uh, let's dive into movies this weekend. I've been seeing a lot of ads for this. Ant Man and Wasp. Tell us what you thought about. Yes, yeah, so this is the latest Marvel Cinematic Universe iteration. I think this is the start of what they're calling their fifth, fourth, or fifth generation. I don't know, but obviously we're bringing back Paul Rudd uh, as Ant Man. We've also got Wasp. And this is another one of those multiverse story where they fall into the quantum realm, which is like super, super tiny. Mm -hmm. And they find this whole other universe going on there. Uh, his daughter actually comes along now, uh, along with uh, his, uh, his his uh, girlfriend's father and mother, okay. who were kind of the original Ant-Man and Wasp, if you will. Huh. That's Michelle Pfeiffer. Uh, and. Uh, they discovered that there's a not so pleasant gentleman there named Kang the Conqueror, okay. played he by Jonathan. Sound pleasant. No, played by Jonathan Majors. Jonathan Majors is this character actor who's really just come on in the last few years. He's been terrific in, on some TV shows and some movies, and now taking some high-profile roles. He's in this this week. He's in the Creed sequel next week. Oh wow! Um, and it's a really interesting take on the villain. He's sort of this almost like hesitant, apologetic, why why he's doing what he's doing, <laughs> but he's still gonna do it. Yeah. So it's big, it's colorful, there's lots of cool creatures, almost like the Star Wars cantina yeah. thing going on. Uh, the storytelling, is a little, the plot's a little kind of all over the place, but I enjoyed it because it was fun. Okay. And you know, the, the, the Marvel movies got really dark there for a while, and I was really happy to see Marvel, but they're like, hey, let's just have some fun. Yeah, yeah right. just yeah. entertain you, make there you, you laugh. Yeah. I love that. Okay, so what's Marlo all about? So Marlo is a, uh, Liam Neeson stars as Marlo, the iconic, Los Angeles detective from those film noir movies okay. from the 1930s and 40s. Got it. This actually isn't one of Philip Chandler's original novels. It's based on a modern novel, but it's very Chandler-esque. And so you kind of know what's going to happen. He's going to be going around. There's going to be some femme fatales. There's going to be some tough guys roughing him up while he's trying to pierce into the mystery of somebody's murder. A really gorgeous looking film. I love the period, the, the clothes, the cars, just the atmosphere of the film. It is kind of like those old film noir movies like yeah. Maltese Falcon where the plot, like you just kind of lose your way after a while. There's so many names and faces. You're not, just don't worry about the plot. Just drink in the atmosphere and I'll think you'll enjoy this one. I sure did. Okay. I love, right. I love already Marlo. seeing the trailer there. Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. cool. it's cool. Now I'm going to let you take this one because you often say this. That you're gonna Winnie the Pooh. Oh, I use Winnie the Pooh something. as a verb. Yeah, just to scoop something out of something yeah. with my hand. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about Winnie the Pooh. Well, all right, to be clear, this is Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. Oh, good, good, good. And yes, it's a <laughs> Winnie the Pooh horror film. All right. Because in case you didn't know, the rights to Winnie the Pooh lapsed. Yes. So now anybody can do anything they want with them. So yeah. somebody said, hey, let's That's make a horror right. movie mm -hmm. yeah. where Winnie the Pooh and Piglet are these like horrifying creatures who go around stalking Christopher Robin. Uh, trying to kill a bunch of young women, uh, and yeah, I haven't seen this one. It sounds like something f if you do if they would do funny, satirical. But from what I've read, it's like a, just like a straight scary horror movie, except oh. it's Winnie the Pooh okay. with the big ears I trying was, to kill everybody. I was not expecting wow. that. So, I, I really thought this was like a cute, heartwarming wow. Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> I really did. Uh, I didn't. Nope. Is, uh, Blood and I honey. I will say it's getting terrible reviews so far. We <laughs> should we should have one up pretty soon. I couldn't on the see film why now. though. Uh, is Eeyore in it? Uh, I think Eeyore has been killed by Pooh and Piglet in, in some sort of like jealous lover's rage from years before. Oh. I'm really not sure. It's unclear. <laughs> okay. I, um. That is, okay. That's I, that's too much right now. Okay. Uh, um. I just destroyed my childhood. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, no, sorry, Eeyore's dead. Yeah. Eeyore's dead. That's um. <laughs> Okay, uh, Oscar shorts. Yeah, uh, so these are the Oscar shorts. I'm not going to talk about all of them because yeah. there's 15 of them. There's documentary shorts, okay. live action shorts, image shorts. But they're, they're being shown in programs together at yeah. a couple different theaters. So go check them out. Always cool if you like the short film. Sure. Uh, go go see this. A lot of interesting ones this year. Okay. I've only seen okay. one whose name I can't repeat on the air, but Google it and you'll know which one it is. Okay, all right. Okay. Appreciate oh. you not getting us in trouble that <laughs> this way. This is Thank a you. step above <laughs> Winnie the Pooh blood and horror yeah, style. Yeah. Okay, I got it. Things just a little Ooh. bit naughty today. I'm no, sorry. Yeah, no, that's yeah. okay. 
Is it another horror movie? No. No, it's not. We okay. have we have one more, it looks like, of an age. Yes, so of this is age. a drama. It's set in 1999 Australia, yeah. and the idea is that there's a young man who's actually from Serbia, so he's already kind of an outsider. Okay. He's also gay at an age, you know, at a time and place when that really wasn't so accepted. Got it. And uh, his best friend's brother shows up in town, and there's like there's this immediate connection between them. He's trying to wonder, like, you know, does he feel the same way I do? Yeah. And the complication being is that the guy is leaving uh, the country forever in just a few days. So it's like, do they want to pursue this relationship in just this brief span of time and is it worth it? So looks interesting. Haven't seen it myself though. Okay, of an age. Yes, yeah, cool. well and the best thing too with your staff, if you haven't seen it, someone else on yeah. your staff have seen it. So if you go to the website, you can see all these different reviews and their takes on it and that's what's so fun about it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, let's remind people how they can go check that out. Uh, let's go to filmyapp.substack.com, hit that subscribe button, or you can just hang out, read it as a website, and enjoy all our wonderful content. Awesome. Chris, yeah. thanks so much. Thank you, Chris. Keep a lot going on. Yeah, yeah. it is. We appreciate it. Have a good weekend, man. Hey, coming up, we're going to learn how two indie natives created a streaming platform for filmmakers that lets them keep 100% of their royalties. That's right, and it helps them share their content with the world and take a look at some of these sets. They're bringing it here to the studio as well. We'll be right back. <laughs>